These are the tools that we're going to use to demonstrate the termination of our LMR600 cable with our new X-Series connector. This here is the CCT-02 cutting tool. This is the CST-600 prep tool. And this here is our CTU universal crimp tool. This is a heavy duty ratcheting crimp tool, has replaceable dies. In the case of this demonstration, we'll use a 610 hex die. This tool has a safety release on the back, so if you need to open it up for any reason, you just pop that safety release and that thing opens right up. It's a ratcheting tool, and if for whatever reason you crimp in the wrong place, you want to open that, you release that, that ratch, that switch there, and that tool opens up. It also has a space for storage of an extra die set in the handle. It's a very rugged tool. In the case of this cable, we'll use a 610 hex crimp die. First thing we'll do is we'll take our cable, and even though this is a nice, looks to appear to be a nice clean cut here, well, first we're going to demonstrate this tool because this is such an important part of the termination process. We're going to take this CCTO2 cutting tool, get two to three inches back from the end of the cable, apply a little bit of pressure, and spin the tool around the cable. What we do is we quickly cut through the jacket and the braid, and even the dielectric for that matter, and what we're doing is we're just scoring the center conductor. And the center conductor is going to snap, and what you're going to end up with is a nice round cable. That's what you want to have. You want nice uniform impedance, so you got a square cut, a clean cut, and a round cable. At that point, we're going to demonstrate also our WSB-600 boot. It's a strain relief boot, it's an IP67 sealed boot, along with our X-Series connector. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little drop of biodegradable lubricant, silicone lubricant on the cable. This stuff dries very quickly, it doesn't leave any residue. Take the boot in the proper orientation and slide it onto the cable, like so. You take your crimp ferrule, slide your crimp ferrule over the cable. Now you take your tool, your CST tool, it's got two sides, it's labeled side one and side two. You start out on side two, which has the, uh, the little spring switch on there. You want to make sure, just take a quick look in there, make sure you didn't leave a pellet from the last time you used the tool. Place it onto the cable until it stops, hard stop. Start pushing down that thumb switch and start spinning around the cable at the same time. And once that thumb switch bottoms out, just like so, just make an extra revolution or two. And what you want to do is leave it depressed and just pull it. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that whole pellet right off of that cable, like so. Now you take the tool, you flip it around the side too, and there's a deburr tool built into the end of the cable, end of the tool. Place that over the center conductor, and just a little back and forth, maybe a half a dozen times. You'll actually see material copper, and what you'll end up with is a nice chamfer on the end of that center conductor. Now, by using this cutting tool in the beginning, we helped this process quite a bit. You know, we, we, we were able to cut the cable without bending the center conductor. That's very important. We didn't leave much of a burr on the center conductor. But this extra step is, is a very important step. It does, it's just a very quick step, but a nice chamfer on the end of that center conductor. It's going to help tremendously with the uh, pin, especially in the case of the spring finger pin. So we're still on side two of the tool. We just deburred the center conductor. Now we want to make sure that that thumb switch is set for crimp. We place that over the cable like an old-fashioned pencil sharpener, and we just start spinning it. You're going to feel some resistance as the blade makes contact with the plastic jacket. And once it cuts all the way through, you can't overdo it, you'll feel the resistance just fall away, just like so. At that point, you pull that tool away, and there you go. That's your, that's your prep. It's, it's something you can do out in the field. It looks like it was done on a real high-end piece of uh, prepping equipment. You have that, that uh, deburr on the center conductor. You've prepped the, uh, the jacket. At that point, we're going to take our connector, as we mentioned, this is an X-Series connector. There's a lot of nice characteristics about these new X-Series connectors. They're tri-metal plated, very high corrosion resistance. They're optimized for VSWR through 6 gigahertz. All these X-Series connectors have these ribs in the back. So whether you're using an adhesive lined shrink boot or using a WSB boot, they really help tremendously with sealing the back of the connector, IP67 sealing and strain relief. 
maybe most importantly is all these X-series connectors, they all have the same exact strip dimensions for a given cable type, so they all work with the CST tool. So whether this was a straight end, a right angle end, a 716th in, a BNC, TNC, etc., they would all work with the same exact tool. Okay, so at this point, we place the connector onto the cable. All we have to do is just fold these braid wires back. This happens to be a DB flooded braid cable. This connector is designed to have a nice snug fit. You just get it started. It's already you know, on there. It's a snug fit between the outer conductor of the cable and the connector. You, you get, push it and you feel, it, you feel some resistance. Come right there. That's the point where the center conductor is making contact with the pin inside the connector. Give it one extra push and turn it. That's those fingers riding up on the, on the center conductor of the cable. Now you bring that ferrule up and you'll see that those braid wires are right where you need them to be. There's no need to trim them with a pair of scissors. They're perfectly lined up. And that's also confirmation that you've got that connector on there properly. At that point, you want to take your uh, CTU crimp tool. It's got, like I said, a 610 hex crimp die in there. And we're going to crimp it just once at the very back of the connector, as close to the connector as we can. This is a nice crimp tool. It's got a nice a lot of leverage, long handle. And this is what that crimp should look like. You, you know, you see that bump in the back, you leave that. Don't, don't go and crimp that. If you were to crimp that, this is by design. If you were to crimp that, you'd crush that jacket, you'd crush the core, you'd change the impedance of the cable, and you'd alter the performance of the cable. So you'd want to leave that. Now we have our WSB, we have our ribs in the back of the connector here. We want to seal up the back end of the connector. This stuff dries very quickly, this lubricant. So we'll put one more drop here. And you may even hear this, this boot snapping onto the back of the connector, but we'll slide this up, we hit that lubricant there. And you hear that snap, and that's really locked on there now. That, that boot is locked on there solid. That's an IP67 seal. It's real nice strain relief and because you know we use this cutting tool we use this strip tool we've really locked down the variables there in terms of the prepping of the cable we use the x-series ez connector spring finger connector with no soldering so that we've knocked all those variables out of the process if you were to do this over and over again you're going to you're going to see consistently good performance in terms of vswr in terms of pull strength so that's that's what you really want to see thank you very much